Hi everyone, today we will discuss regarding landmark trials in different rheumatological conditions. The tremendous progress in clinical development over the past decades has revolutionized rheumatology and significantly benefited our patients. COBRA trial was a milestone in the development of the present treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. In this, a combination therapy with prednisolone, methotrexate, and sulfasalazine was compared with sulfasalazine monotherapy. This was published in 1997. The main outcome were changes in the disease activity score and radiographic score. The author concluded that combined therapy with sulfasalazine, methotrexate, and prednisolone is superior to sulfasalazine monotherapy in suppressing disease activity and radiological progression of early rheumatoid arthritis. Tycora trial published in 2004. It was a single blind randomized controlled trial to know the effect of treatment strategy of tight control for rheumatoid arthritis. Patients were allocated to either intensive management or routine care. Primary outcome measure were mean fall in the disease activity score and proportion of patients with a good response. The author concluded that a strategy of intensive outpatient management of rheumatoid arthritis substantially improves disease activity, radiographic disease progression, physical function, and quality of life at no additional cost. NIH trial in SLE. This evaluated steroid plus azathioprine, oral or intravenous cyclophosphamide, or a combination for patients with active lupus nephritis. The author concluded that high dose prednisolone alone was inferior to any cytotoxic regime. The study reached statistical significance for reducing the risk of end stage renal disease for IV cyclophosphamide versus prednisolone alone. Eurolupus trial compared low or high dose cyclophosphamide in combination with steroids and azathioprine for all patients with lupus nephritis. It is a multicenter prospective trial, randomly assigned patient to high dose IV cyclophosphamide monthly for six months or low dose IV cyclophosphamide 500 mg six fortnightly pulses, each of which was followed by azathioprine. The author concluded that low or high dose cyclophosphamide were associated with comparable outcomes. ALMS 1 and 2 trial were conducted for patients with lupus nephritis in which mycophenolate mofetil was compared with cyclophosphamide and mycophenolate mofetil was compared with azathioprine. The primary outcome was response rate to mycophenolate. The author concluded that MMF and IV cyclophosphamide have similar effect in short-term induction, though Blake and Hispanic patients responded better to MMF. ALMS2 showed that MMF was superior to azathioprine for maintenance. Rituximab's trial was published in 2010. To compare rituximab with cyclophosphamide as induction therapy and ANCA associated renal vasculitis, the primary endpoint was sustained remission rates at 12 months and severe adverse events. The author concluded that rituximab as regimen was not superior to standard IV cyclophosphamide for severe ANCA associated vasculitis. Sustained remission rates were high in both groups and rituximab based regimen was not associated with reduction in early severe adverse events. REO trial was published in 2010. Rituximab was compared with cyclophosphamide for remission induction and ANCA associated vasculitis. The primary endpoint was remission of disease without the use of prednisolone at six months. The author concluded that rituximab therapy was not inferior to daily cyclophosphamide treatment for induction of remission in severe ANCA-associated vasculitis and may be superior in relapsing disease. 
Confirms trial was published in 2010. Purpose was to compare urate lowering efficacy and safety of rivoxostate low and high dose and allopurinol in patients with gout over six months. It was concluded that urate lowering efficacy of rivoxostate 80 mg exceeded that of rivoxostate 40 mg and allopurinol 200 and 300 mg dose, which were comparable. In subjects with mild to moderate renal impairment, both rivoxostate doses were more efficacious than allopurinol and equally safe. Tycopa trial was published in 2015. It was to know the effect of tight control of inflammation in early psoriatic arthritis patients. Patients with early psoriatic arthritis were randomized to receive either tight control with four weekly review and escalation of therapy or to the standard care with 12 weekly review for 48 weeks. Primary outcome was achieving ACR20 response at week 48. It was concluded that tight control of psoriatic arthritis disease activity using a treat to target approach significantly improves joint and skin outcome for newly diagnosed psoriatic arthritis patient with no unexpected severe adverse events observed. Scleroderma lung study or SLS1 was published in 2006 in which cyclophosphamide was compared with placebo in scleroderma associated lung disease. It was concluded that one year of oral cyclophosphamide in patients with symptomatic systemic sclerosis associated ILD had a significant but modest beneficial effect on lung function, dyspnea, thickening of the skin, and health-related quality of life. Scleroderma Lung Study 2 SLS2 in which cyclophosphamide was compared with MMF for the treatment of scleroderma-related ILD. It was concluded that treatment with MMF for two years or cyclophosphamide for one year both resulted in significant improvements in pre-specified measure of lung function over the two-year course of the study, although MMF was better tolerated. Census trial published in 2019 in which nantadanib was compared with placebo in patients with systemic sclerosis-associated interstitial lung disease. Patients were randomly assigned to nantadanib and placebo. Primary endpoint was annual rate of decline in force vital capacity assessed over 52 weeks. Secondary endpoint was modified Rodnan skin score. It was concluded that among patients with ILD associated with systemic sclerosis, the annual rate of decline in FAC was lower with nantadanib than with placebo. No clinical benefit of nantadanib was observed for other manifestations of systemic sclerosis. Inbuilt trial was published in 2019 in which nantadanib was compared with placebo in progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease affecting more than 10% of lung volume on HRCT. Patient either received nantadanib or placebo. Primary endpoint was annual rate of decline in the FPC is assessed over 52 weeks period. In conclusion, the author concluded that patient with progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease the annual rate of decline in the FVC was significantly lower among patients who received nantadanib than among those who received placebo. We will briefly discuss uh, regarding the stem cell transplantation in systemic sclerosis. The first study includes assess study in which Autologous non myeloablative hemopoietic stem cell transplantation was compared with pulse cyclophosphamide once per month for systemic sclerosis, and it was concluded that non myeloablative autologous HSCT improves skin and pulmonary function in patients with systemic sclerosis for up to two years 
and is preferable to the current standard of care, but longer follow-up is needed. SCOT trial in which myeloablative CD34 positive selected autologous HSCT was compared with immunosuppression by means of a monthly infusion of cyclophosphamide and scleroderma patients. It was concluded that myeloablative autologous hemopoietic stem cell transplantation achieved long-term benefits in patients with scleroderma, including improved event-free and overall survival at a cost of increased expected toxicity. Rates of treatment-related deaths and post-transplantation use of DMARD were lower than those in the previous reports of non-myeloablative transplantation. Thank you.